This is the video for Chapter 7, Lesson 3, Sampling Distributions of Sample Means. So as you're watching this video, uh, I'd like you to think about how is the sampling distribution of a sample mean similar to the sampling distribution of a sampling proportion. So in terms of that, I'd like you to think about center, spread, sample size, and then the three conditions, the random, normal, and independent. Which one of those conditions is the same, which is different? So when you see x bar, just like p hat, the accent above the p let us know that it was the sample proportion. This is the sample mean. So now we have an average uh, for a sample used to estimate the parameter. Remember the true parameter or true average, we use mu, this little u looking letter for some variable. So p hat refers to a proportion or percent, a number between 0 and 1, uh, inclusive of 0 and 1, or between 0% and 100%. x bar refers to the mean of a sample. It's not a proportion or a percent. Uh, so sometimes that can get a little tricky if our average is between 0 and 1. It may seem like a proportion. But think if we're talking about parts of a whole, which is a proportion, like a fraction of a whole, or an average of a number, or something that's being timed, or an average of some variable. So remember the sampling distribution. So very many things in this lesson are the same as in with proportions. There's just a little difference because we have a sample mean instead of a proportion. So in the same way, sampling distribution of x-bar describes how the statistic x-bar, remember that's the average of one sample, average the mean of one sample, how it varies in all possible samples of the same size from the population. So uh, taking samples of the pennies in class and determining the average age of 5 pennies and then the average age of 10 pennies and then 15, uh, that is what we were doing. We were finding the average age and then when we combined all of our data, it's like finding an average of the averages we found. Um, the more data we have, the better that average of our averages becomes, the more we know about what the true parameter is. So if we have a true SRS and we have the sampling distribution, it represents all possible samples of the same size. When you averaged all those out, we would get the true center, meaning the average of our sampling distribution is the average of the true parameter. That means it's an unbiased estimator. So that's the random condition, that it, uh, you have to have a random sample and those other unbiased factors we talked about in designing a study um, in order to have a good estimate of the true mean. Now keep in mind, a sampling distribution is like every x-bar possible, every sample mean possible of the same size n. Um, and that's why we get the same average for that as we do with the population distribution. Standard deviation, now this is different for a sample mean. Instead of using p times 1 minus p over n, all square rooted, uh, the sample, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x-bar is the standard deviation of the population, that's what this is up here, divided by the square root of the sample size. So again, this, the larger the sample size, the smaller the standard deviation. Um, this means that averages vary less than individual observations. So an individual observation would have a value of 1, whereas uh, averages are going to tend uh, are going to have smaller standard deviation. Um, this is only we're only able to use these standard deviation equations for proportions and for sample means if our sample size is less than 10 percent of the population. So little n here represents uh, the, the sample size, big n here represents the population. So we can only sample less than 10 percent of the, the population in order to use these equations. When we're looking at these in problems, if you're not given the actual number of the population, you would just write something that shows you know what the 10% condition is to use this formula, meaning you would just write something saying if we had a sample size of 35, that the population must be at least 350. We assume the population is at least 350. Now the other difference for sample means is the normal condition. So this, the formula for standard deviation is slightly different, but it's the same idea that you have to sample less than 10% of the population. Uh, for the normal calculation, we don't have a proportion, so we're not looking at the sample size times the proportion being greater than or equal to 10, and the sample size times the quantity 1 minus the proportion being greater than or equal to 10. All we need to know is that n is greater than or equal to 30. Now we'll get into some specifics about what do you do when it's less than 10, what do you do when it's 15 to 25, but if n is greater than or equal to 30, we're going to assume it's approximately normal sampling distribution, or the distribution is approximately normal. So that's a big difference in the condition, that n has to be greater than or equal to 30. Um, so again, the random condition is exactly the same. 
that if we have an SRS and we have a nice uh, design for a study, we'd have an unbiased estimator, meaning the mean of the sampling distribution would be the, mean, the true mean. So the center of that normal curve would be the true center. Uh, the 10% condition here, the independent condition, is that we're sampling less than 10% of the population. And then we can take the population standard deviation and we can divide by the square root of the sample size as long as we've satisfied that condition. And then the normal condition is that as long as n is greater than or equal to 30, we can go ahead and assume that the sampling distribution is normal. Okay, so that's the main difference. Uh, please look through the summary in your book. Please look over examples, and here's your multiple choice. So this is about our conditions. We know that the sampling distribution of a sample mean is approximately normal or possibly exactly normal when So, pause here, look through your book, and I'll give you one hint on this answer. So, whenever we take a distribution from, whenever we take a sampling distribution from a normal distribution, we'll have a normal sampling distribution. So, that we, we know that, so look back to this portion of the outline as help for the multiple choice, then answer the free response below.